No, coach's decision, and we're waiting here. Any word on Kansas players yet copied? You got Kansas players situation yet? situation where we ought to be able to let the winners go first. Go over some stats while we're waiting for uh, Austin P to show up. And again, the format is we'll have a losing team first. We'll have a opening statement from the uh, 
Coach, no follow-up questions, and we'll have the players available for 15 minutes. Dismiss the players, and then we'll have the head coaches. Kansas shot 55.7%, 62.9% in the second half. Austin P shot 41%. 44.1% in the second half. Austin P led by Josh Robinson with 24 points. John Murray, 13. Chris Horton, 14. Khalil Davis with 12. Makalak led uh, Kansas with 23. Perry Ellis with 21. Landon Lucas with 16. And uh, Wade and Selton with 14. Jamari Trailer came off the bench with nine rebounds. Chris Horton did have a double double, 14 points, 10 rebounds for Austin P. Kansas did set a Wells Fargo Reno record for most points in the game. Previous was 91 by Iowa State twice. Any names yet on Kansas players copied? How are we doing on the clock, guys? Yeah, that's. Less than three minutes, Mike. Any word on Kansas players yet? Before we start this press conference, and get a reminder to have your cell phones turned off, uh, no flash or video photography, and again, we'll have an opening statement from our head coach.
No follow-up questions when we we'll spend the next 15 minutes with our student athletes. This time, Coach, if you could uh, give opening comments on the game. Okay, well, <clears throat> I think it's pretty clear. Uh, Kansas is obviously a really talented uh, basketball team, great size and athletic ability. Um, I, I think, you know, we, we uh, took a bunch of jump shots early in the game. Uh, unfortunately, didn't, didn't make uh, many of those. And uh, we got buried inside. I think they're just so big and strong. They got numbers in there. That, that was an issue for us, <clears throat> as was uh, second chance points uh, in the first half. I think they had 10 offensive rebounds. This time, we're opening it up for questions for our student athletes. Please raise your hand. We'll get a microphone over to you. Please state your name and affiliation. Front row. Ken Corbett from the Topeka Capital Journal. Uh, for Chris, um, I'm sure you're the focal point of a lot of defenses, but you got off to a slow start. What was Kansas doing against you? Um, uh, it was just really, it just didn't flow like that, uh, how we really wanted it to. We'd, um, they pushed us out a little bit. They pushed me out. Uh, I didn't get as deep as I wanted to to catch the ball. So that was really just on me, not getting in the right position. Back row aisle, Larry. Larry Kotler, 1350 ESPN in Des Moines. What's the most impressive thing about playing a team like Kansas? What, what's the toughest thing about playing a team as good as that? Uh, I think I think just their size. Uh, I, they, I think that's what really, that's what really beat us, their size. and. Um, we had a tough time just guarding them. I think we scored enough points. Like we, we scored 80 points, but we just didn't guard any. They scored 100 points. You got a question here in the aisle? OK, we get a microphone over here, please. Autumn, Al Autumn Allison with the Leaf Chronicle for the players, all of you. What are your guys' thoughts on having your improbable run in in the way that it did? We'll start with Chris, then Josh, and John. Uh, it really didn't end how we wanted it to. You know, we could have definitely uh, defended better. I feel like we did score enough points on offense. Uh, second half was really good for us offensively, and we had some good defensive uh, spurts in the second half. But uh, just the run we had going through the conference tournament. It was a great run, you know. We enjoyed everything we did, and we're going to remember forever, you know. Uh, regards to today, we just should have, we just wish we could have did better defensively. But um, overall, we're happy what we've done. Josh? Yeah, I'm, I'm proud of the run we had, uh, and I'm proud of how, how we kept fighting today when we got down. And I'm just looking for, I'm really looking forward to next year uh, playing with these guys again. John? Um, I'm really just proud of how we turned it on in conference. I mean, I'm pretty sure nobody expected us to be here. And the fact that we um, got four back-to-back -back wins and we got here and we just, if we had guarded just a little more and got a few extra stops, then we probably could be moving on. But I feel like we gave it our all and we just came up short. But I'm still proud in the end. Other questions? Middle right here. Glavin. Glavin Day with the Allstate. Uh, Josh, does it, knowing that you just played a top seeded team and you were the leading scorer for both teams, what, how does that make you feel? Um, I don't know. Uh, it, it, makes, it makes me feel good. I just, that, this is the type of player I am. I have confidence. I feel like I'm scoring anybody. It doesn't matter who I'm playing. I'm not scared to play anybody. It just, it's just how I am as a person, as a player. I feel like when I'm on the court, I feel like I'm the best player on the court. Any other questions? Okay, we'll go back to the aisle here. For Chris, this is your last college basketball game. I know before you've been able to just, it's been emotional for you every time. It's been one of those chances for you. What are the thoughts going through your head right now? Um, I don't know, that's it. Like the last thing I ever did was I made it here. You know, I did everything I said I wanted to do. I wanted to make the NCAA tournament. I wanted to win the conference tournament. Uh, I wanted to beat Murray, did that. Uh, I done did everything I said I wanted to do while I was here. So I'm really happy with everything I've done here. And uh, I'm just, you know, I'm, I have a good feeling about what I've left at Austin P. I 
Does he hand over here at all? Or anything else for our student athletes? Well, thank you very much, guys, and thanks, Chris, and an outstanding career. Thank you. We'll leave it open now for questions for Coach. Please raise your hand. Okay, we've got the front row here, Coach. Ken Corbett, Speaker Capital Journal. You mentioned Kansas' is strength inside. Do you feel like that they wanted to take away Chris and make you a jump shotting team in this game? Well, I, I think uh, what you said is true, but uh, if I can back up to your question a while ago uh, about Chris's slow start, or someone asked that question, I think the, the problem was uh, we, we kind of uh, fell in love with the jump shot and uh, we weren't getting it in there. Uh, you know, I, I thought we needed to get it in there more earlier in the game and, and at least try to get to the free throw, free throw line. Uh, we, we dug ourselves a big hole by, by not doing that. But they are big and strong, athletic. Uh, we just, we're, we're quite honestly not equipped to, to handle that, a team like that inside with, with their numbers and size. Other questions for our coach? Go on the far back, microphone on the aisle. Dylan Sherwood with KJHK 90.7. Coach, what was kind of the game plan on speed Makai Luke? He came off the bench and had a pretty good game, 23 points. Yeah. Well, we, we went to a zone, uh, you know, when he was already in the game. So we, we had to pay uh, more attention to where he was. What, what actually happened on a couple of plays is we got screened in and they got the ball to him and he made a couple of threes. But um, he's a good basketball player. And, you know, coming into this game, I really thought he was, uh, he might just jump shoot, but he can do more than just jump shoot. He, he's a good basketball player and, and um, he was definitely a factor in the game. Go back to the aisle here. Autumn Allison with the Leaf Chronicle. Uh, you're only going to be missing two of your players next year. That seems it should bode well with the efforts that Josh Robertson has put forth. Is it giving you any kind of indication of what to expect for the governors? Well, I, I think uh, there's some good young players in this program for sure. Uh, you know, there's some, there's a, a piece or two that has to be uh, filled and replaced, but. Uh, I, I think one of the uh, real encouraging things about this run is uh, during the conference tournament, there were times when we were playing uh, with three freshmen uh, and a sophomore. <clears throat> so I, I think that there's good, good young players in this program, but, but some recruiting needs for sure. Go back. Hate to ask you this right after this, but your contract's going to be up this year. Have you given any thoughts on what's next for you? You, you know, I've said earlier that uh, I told my wife on one occasion, didn't, didn't want to talk about it, that we're going to focus on the conference tournament. And then uh, it came up again, and I said, we're going to focus on the NCAA tournament. Uh, you know, uh, Ryan and I agreed several uh, weeks ago uh, that we were going to talk about this after the season was over. So that's, that's what I'm sure will happen. Still have time for a couple more questions, anybody? Okay, coach, thank you very much for a great season. Okay, thank you, appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, I, I wanna thank all of you uh, for what you've done as it relates to uh, Ryan and uh, getting that word out for us the way uh, that you have. Thank you very much.
passing out stats while we're passing out stats. Again, the format, uh, Coach Self will give an opening statement. No follow-up questions. Then we'll spend the next 15 minutes with our student athletes. We'll dismiss them, and then we'll have time for Coach Self for another 15 minutes, one-on-one -on -one questions. Again, please turn your cell phones on vibrator mode or turn them off. No video photography. Okay, Coach, congratulations on a great win. And your thoughts? Well, I'm, you know, I'm obviously happy that we that we won and we played pretty well in stretches. Uh, certainly fouled way too much and didn't guard near as well as what we need to guard in order to have a chance to to uh, to probably advance, uh, 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 you know, past Saturday. So we got to we got to tighten that up, but. Uh, I, I do like how our, our bench played, and, and I thought these two guys probably were the two best players in the game for us. Okay, at this time, we'll entertain questions for our student athletes. Please raise your hand or have a microphone holder over. Deep in thought, here we go back here, about five rows back. Chris Lazarino with Kansas Alumni. Guys, could you talk about Coach Self commented that the bench was key here. Is this uh, this team can be dangerous with if the bench really contributes like it did tonight? Start with uh, Jamari. Uh, Speed stepped it up uh, today. He had a great game offensively. Uh, Legero was great off the bench, and uh, it was a point in the game where uh, when they were in, we uh, actually were a little bit better than uh, the starters were. So uh, I just feel like we just got a, 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 a deep group and. Uh, you just got guys that you got to respect when we come out there. <coughs> Back row here. Uh, Danny Lawhon, Des Moines Register. Uh, you know, what was Coach's message to you guys coming into a type of game where you're seen as an overwhelming favorite, and a lot of times that's the way these one versus 16 games go? I mean, given the roles that you guys need to play, I mean, what was the message that he gave to you, and how well do you guys feel like you came out and accomplished it? Go ahead, sweet. Uh, you know, it's always hard because it's first game, and we need to get confidence and uh, just set a tone. And uh, we just need to win the first game to go to the second round. And uh, for us, it's just a two-game tournament. Jamari? Uh, we just had to come out here and be aggressive. Uh, try to have fun where we were going out there playing, play together, and uh, we had to lock in on, defen on defense. Uh, like, Coach said, uh, like Coach said, I don't think we did a, a, as good a job as we could have, but uh, I feel like we can t tune it up a little bit better for our next game. Okay, we got Chuck about the, on the aisle, third row. Chuck Schopner from the AP. Svee, what was it that got you going today? You had a couple shots early or what, you know? I mean, you had a career-high game out there. Uh, you know, when I first got in the game, I just trying to play uh, defense first because, you know, if you're playing defense, offense just kind of naturally. And uh, I just made a couple shots, and then I was just keep going. Other questions for our student athletes? In the back, and then we'll come back to Chuck. Dylan Sherwood, KJHK 90.7. Speed. With the with Devonte Frank and and uh, Wayne having foul trouble, what did you think your role was going to be with them in foul trouble? Uh, you know, like today, I was trying to play point guard and uh, just trying to create opportunities for my teammates for a shot instead of taking shots for myself. Okay, Chuck, Jamar, do you see things like that from speed and practice and scrimmages all uh, a lot? Or? Yeah, actually, it's like that all the time in practice. Uh, he, he, not, he didn't surprise me today because I see it all the time from him. And uh, he just got to stay confident like this. And he can do a lot for us. So uh, I'm just I'm proud of him today. And uh, I know he can, he, he, he can do it even, even better, actually. Any other questions? OK, if not, thank you very much, guys. We'll see you tomorrow. Congratulations. <coughs>
Has your perception, your approach changed when you get to this point of the season, the term, just how you perceive it and how you go, go about getting your team ready? Uh, you know, I don't, I don't know. I, 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 uh, I don't think it's changed much. Uh, uh, I, think, I think that, that uh, me personally, I think I'm a little bit more relaxed and looser this year than maybe what I have been the last couple of years because our team's playing better or, you know, Habs has been playing better. And, you know, we kind of we uh, limped home the last couple of years with the injuries. So, so I, I, I think that may be part of it. But I, I, if, if anything, I think, a, you know, they say the, the, the coach can, I mean, the players can take on the kind of the reflection, the attitude of the coach. A lot of time, the coach can kind of take on the attitude of the players uh, and how and how they're acting and how they're playing and how focused they are. And I, I think our group, you know, we didn't do it second half today, but I think our group has been, you know, really really good in that area uh, over the last six weeks or so. Okay, go to the aisle on the left, and then we we'll come over here on the right. Hey, Coach Kellis Rubnan here with the Wichita Eagle. Uh, Ten minutes, seven points for LeGerald Vick. That's more than he's had in quite some time. What what did you what gave you confidence? in him that he could do that today and do you think he can do that here heading forward in any other games? Well, I don't think it's realistic to think that he can come in and, and, and uh, you know, just at the drop of a dime, he's going to go out and get you, what do you have, seven points or, or, or whatnot and, and uh, you know, kind of take over the game there for a short period of time where we kind of needed some to get a little bit of a extend the lead. So uh, I, I do have confidence in LeGerald. He's our six perimeter player. And a lot of times the six perimeter players odd man out, and and because uh, we play five, and 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 but he but he 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 looked good today, and and he looked confident, and and certainly uh, uh, you know Brandon's back's been bothering him, and he wasn't he didn't move very well, good today, and and the fact that that you know you had all the starters in foul trouble, you know we were going to play him regardless, and you know he responded like he's supposed to, he was ready. Go on the right. Uh, Bill Jerry Tipton, Lexington Herald Leader. You mentioned earlier that you guys fouled way too much, and I'm wondering, are NCAA games called tighter? Is there an adjustment there that players have to make? Well, I think players have to make the adjustment, but today's game was 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 called much tighter than 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 what we've probably been playing. Uh, but uh, you know, I'm not saying right, wrong, and different. I, I don't think our players did a good job adjusting at all. I, I felt like we were on. We were defensive on defense, uh, and and uh, we really didn't create any type of, of uh, uh, tempo or pace defensively in, in large part because, you know, they were in the bonus, if I'm not mistaken, both halves by about the 16-minute mark. So you play defensive the rest of the half, and and uh, so so that that, didn't, that, didn't, that did not help us at all. But, but you know what? We were in the bonus too, so, it was, you know, it was obviously called both ways. Coach, I'm um – the value of having uh, so many bench players perform well today as a group, does that <clears throat> boost their confidence as a group, uh, and especially right now at this point in the season? Yeah, I, I think so. I, I think, uh, you know, it's nice to see the ball go in the hole. And to me, you know, if you're going to – if the, the guys that would get the most confidence, obviously, would – you know, Jamari – I don't even know if Jamari scored, and he was by far the best player in the first half because he changed the whole uh, uh, tempo and energy level. Uh, Svi, obviously, it's great to see him go in the basket. LeGerald hadn't had much, much uh, uh, time at all. So, you know, moving forward, you know, if his number's called, I think that should give him some confidence uh, without question. Uh, uh, Carlton didn't have a, a, a Big 12 tournament type game, you know, that, he, that, he, that he's been having for us, but he was still solid. Uh, uh, and I thought Sheck, you know, even though it was, it was seven minutes late, I thought he was really active and, and looked great uh, uh, out there. So, yeah, it, it helps. I, th I think most coaches would say they'd really like to see the guys that are playing the majority of the minutes play the best, but certainly in a situation like this, th those guys kind of bailed us out. Okay, we're going to go on the right, and then we'll come over to Chuck on the left here in the aisle. It reflects the players' uh, attitudes, I guess. What, how important is that as a number one seed that there's a relaxed tone? Uh, well, I think it's probably important. I, I don't think our guys uh, – uh, have have felt pressure from being the the number one seed. I, you know, what what we talked about a lot, at, at least in the in the Big 12 and the Big 12 tournament, was to validate what had transpired over the last two months, and they did that. And and and, but I don't think it's to the point you need to validate anything anymore. I I, I think that what you got to do, you got to play hungry, you got to play aggressive, and you got to play loose, and 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 uh, 
and you can't let other people play well. And, and certainly, I think we accomplished about three of those things today, but we obviously didn't get the fourth one accomplished defensively. Again, for our transcribers, if you could give your name and affiliate. Uh, yeah, well, Chuck Schaffner from the AP. Going back to Spee again, he played three minutes in your last game. Was this a, just a case of a guy getting an opportunity today and yeah, taking you know, advantage? Yeah, you know, I, I would have liked to have played Spee more in the last game. Uh, uh, the way West Virginia presses, you want your best ball handlers out there. And, of course, Devontae and Frank weren't in foul troubles, and, and, and they weren't tired. So you have those guys out there. And if Wayne plays well, then there's not a lot of minutes to, to go around. Uh, uh, but yeah, I, I think I think uh, today the fact he came in and, and I don't know exactly what happened, but he, but he fired one right off the bat, and and I, I think it went down. And then after that, he was ultra aggressive the rest of the way. I, I thought I thought his his moves off the bounce were actually uh, more impressive than maybe the shots off the catch. I thought he looked athletic. We're gonna go on the right side. Howie Kasoy, New York Post. Bill, you mentioned obviously the defense you weren't thrilled with. Facing UConn on Saturday, what are the biggest problems that they present offensively? And then also, is there any mention just over the past two years, what obviously different makeup this team, but can it be good in any way? What happened the past two years in terms of going into the next game? Can who be good? Can what happened the past two years that you have this veteran group that has been there? Oh, uh, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I think, I think uh, experience is a good thing without question. Uh, uh, you know, I, I think that we can be a lot more aggressive. You know, usually when you're aggressive, you foul less. Uh, when you're on your heels a little bit, and you obviously uh, uh, and allow other people to get in their comfort zone, you foul more. And you know, just you know, I, I've looked at UConn, uh, but I haven't studied them to the point I will tonight. But but we, uh, you know, we've got a good book on them. And 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 the thing about them, they're, they're, they're really they're 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 really hard to guard because their players can all put it down. And they can force help, and they can you know, force you to foul them. And and certainly, you know, with the way we defended the ball today, you know, we got to have to correct that uh, quite a bit. But uh, uh, we'll be excited, and we'll, we'll get together uh, a game plan on how to best attempt to to uh, slow them down. But but I, I'm really impressed with how good their guys are with the ball. On the back, on the right, Andy Lawhon, Des Moines Register. Let's turn the equation around to UConn on the other side. Um, Kevin Ollie said the second half that he really felt like that his team woke up and played tournament level defense after a rough first 20 minutes. They extended the perimeter really well, and they've got a top five field goal percentage defense in the country. Uh, you know, challenges on your side for making sure the offense does what it needs to do and still works inside out while they're really sitting 20 to 23 feet away from the basket all the time. Well, you know the the the. The, you know why, why were why was UConn effective in the second half offensively? They probably were more aggressive and drove it harder and got downhill, and and that's something that I don't think you want to do against anybody that that pressures is to is to play sideline to sideline or east west. You know you want you want to drive it downhill to force help, and and they've got a you know rim protector obviously. So but they are they're they're they're, they're terrific defensively, and and we're we're going to have to have probably better ball and body movement uh, against them. Uh, Without question, and uh, uh, certainly it'll be a challenge. But you know, we've we, we, we've uh, shown that we, we can play pretty good offense against you know solid defensive teams. But they they do they do certainly uh, 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 do some things uh, athletically that that certainly if you're not aggressive can give anyone problems. Any other questions for coach? Anything else? Okay, well, you got here late. Here you go. Bill, I'm sure you spoke to this in some way or another, but but for the, the, the big picture sense, how, how good is it for you overall to be able to distribute minutes like that today and, and maybe even see the guys in the last three, four minutes have some fun? Yeah, you know, I, I think it's probably good, especially for Svee and LeGerald and Sheck, you know, got some confidence today. I, I think those are all really good things, uh, 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 but I don't know how you guys felt, but with, with that many stoppages with fouls and timeouts being five minutes long each and 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 then you got you throw an extra one in each half uh, uh unless you're in major foul trouble i don't i didn't see guys getting tired uh uh but but certainly it's you know depth is really really good but but uh, i don't know that we'll we'd have to use that much depth moving forward unless we're in foul trouble any other questions okay coach congratulations we'll see you tomorrow
jeopardizes the welfare of student athletes and the intercollegiate athletics community. For more information, go to don'tbetonit.org.